Well, we already know that the interstellar medium contains both hydrogen and oxygen. Couldn't the heat from this exploding nova have caused some of the hydrogen to oxidize? Doesn't water condense? If tiny droplets of water condensed and made ice crystals, wouldn't other elements condense around these little ice crystals? And wouldn't these things clump together and eventually produce a huge rock full of carbon and calcium, iron? Wouldn't these core objects fall together toward the middle of the cloud? And wouldn't the hydrogen, the unoxidized hydrogen, be left near the periphery? In several billion years, the sun will pass through these clumps as it traverses space and will brighten when it enters a clump and will dim when it passes out of a clump of hydrogen gas. Producing the swings on Al Gore's climate chart. Why would these spikes on Al Gore's climate chart repeat every 110,000 years because obviously the Sun is in orbit around another star and it's passing through the same clumps again and again. What you saw there was my animation based on my ideas. It bears a remarkable resemblance to this animation from NASA. I made my video months ago I found this NASA video today, March the 10th. I'm going to zoom in on this cloud of gas in this animation from NASA so you can see the direction of the sun's movement indicating that somebody at NASA believes that the sun is in motion. And I'm going to clip and zoom in this portion so you can see the word Alpha Centauri. My theory of the climate is that our solar system and several other stars condensed out of a huge nebula that exploded billions of years ago, leaving today only clumps of interstellar fields of dust and gas, very thin but very huge, measuring hundreds of millions of miles across. And the Earth, just as the Earth is in motion around the Sun, the Sun is in motion around another star. If stars were not orbiting one another, they would all fall together. The universe would, would disappear into one big clump. But everything that remains in the galaxy is uh, in orbit. Everything that was not capable of assuming an orbit uh, disappeared and became the core of a star. Stars are huge. A planet, a huge planet, Jupiter, could, could uh, uh, fall into a star and disappear without a trace because stars are that much bigger than the, the largest of planets. Condensation gets postponed indefinitely by the phenomena of, of orbiting. Because the Earth and the Sun and the solar system are orbiting another star, the Sun, of course, is in motion, moving through space, and as it moves through, through space, it encounters and passes through these clumps. And when the Sun passes inside a cloud of, of interstellar gas, which is mainly hydrogen, of course, the sun has extra fuel available to it. It burns a little brighter. In other words, it consumes its own light a little bit slower. Stars come in three flavors, yellow, blue, and red. These yellow stars right here, Alpha Centauri, the sun, these yellow stars are secondary stars that form from a nebula 
the result of an explosion of a large blue star such as Sirius and Procyon. You can see that these three stars are gravitationally associated. They move together in unison toward the core, independently of stars in the background. Five billion years ago, the star on the right collapsed and then exploded, creating a huge field of debris. You couldn't see it because it was dark. There are no stars there. But eventually, heavier elements condensed over a long period of time and fell toward the center. Most of these heavier elements, these condensation objects, became core material for stars. Some of them, some few of them, went into orbit around a future star, and as it accumulated material, debris, it became a planet, such as the Earth. Condensing more slowly is the hydrogen skin of the nebula, composed of voids surrounded by hydrogen, forming what appear to be bubbles. These will become clumps. Now, the tendency is toward condensation, but condensation gets postponed indefinitely by the phenomenon of orbiting. Because the Earth and the Sun and the solar system are orbiting another star, the Sun, of course, is in motion moving through space, and as it moves through, through space, it encounters and passes through these clumps. And when the sun passes inside a cloud of uh, interstellar gas, which is mainly hydrogen, of course the sun has extra fuel available to it. It burns a little brighter. In other words, it consumes its own life a little bit slower. The sun is busily converting hydrogen into helium. And when the hydrogen runs out, the sun will collapse. But if it gets additional hydrogen from an outside source, like a cloud of gas that it passes through, it will brighten slightly. Not enough you can tell with your eyes, but uh, scientific instruments can detect it. And even better, you can detect it by measuring ocean temperature over decades. And you will find that the ocean slowly, slowly, slowly warms up. And when the sun passes out of a cloud of interstellar gas, the sun dims and the ocean slowly, slowly, slowly cools off. This accounts for the zigs and zags, ups and downs on Al Gore's climate chart. The sun, and obviously the sun in its orbit going round and round, is passing through the same clumps repeatedly. In other words, if you had this chart 100,000 years ago, you could have anticipated today's warm climate, regardless of whether Americans drove SUVs or Obama's hybrid toy cars. And so the sun, as it orbits Alpha Centauri, it moves across space in a, this kind of motion. And, uh, but as it, as it moves, it passes through the same clumps repeatedly, and then it eventually moves on out of those clumps and encounters other clumps. 